welcome to our Friday Night Sports edition of The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, Cricket Australia takes the big cash for the big bash, allowing private investment in their 2020 tournament for the first time. The Australian Rugby League team accused of being whinging poms and holy holograms. The Power Balance Bracelet wins a Shonky Award. Our panel tonight, Anthony Sherwood from Alpha Magazine, Andrew Logan from the Royal website and Amanda Shalala from ABC News 24. First up tonight, it's been described as the biggest change to Australian cricket since World Series cricket. The plan for eight city-based 2020 teams, backed by private investors and bringing in big money from India. Cricket Australia's board has been meeting today, today to decide whether or not Australia will stage its own IPL-style 2020 competition. And a short time ago, CEO of Cricket Australia, James Sutherland, held a media conference. Here's what he had to say. The competition will be uh, owned, owned, controlled and, and managed by Cricket Australia and uh, everyone in Australian cricket is very excited about this new big... Uh, we see it as a fantastic opportunity for, for the game to continue to, to grow off the back of the incredible popularity of 2020 cricket and uh, to bring new fans to the game of cricket. So for the first time ever, Cricket Australia is allowing private investment in Australian cricket teams. And joining us to discuss these changes uh, is author and journalist Gideon Haig. His 23rd book, Sphere of Influence, has just been released. It deals with the changing nature of international cricket and in particular the rise of 2020 cricket and private investment in the game. Gideon, thanks for coming on. My pleasure, my pleasure. At that press conference which you just attended in Melbourne, uh, James Sullivan said that he thought that this announcement was good for the fans. Who do you think it's mm. good for? Uh, it's interesting he said that everyone in Australia was very excited about this. He should speak for himself, frankly. Uh, well, I'm sort of excited, I'm interested. It's an interesting historical hinge point, as you say. It's, um, it's an important stage in the game's evolution. We've only ever had private sector investment in the game in the 20th century in 1977 with Kerry Packer. The, the board wasn't terribly excited about that at the time. I think that, and in a sense, I think that, uh, that, that Cricket Australia administrators in general have been haunted by the, the memory of the, uh, the Packer eruption in the sense that they've tried now to, to preempt uh, possible changes. They see 2020 as, uh, as, as an enormous cash cow, potentially, and they think that it should be the, the traditional games to exploit rather than what happened in India, for instance, where the first person to take 2020 and run with it was a, a private entrepreneur called Subhash Chandra who, who set up the Indian Cricket League, which inspired the Board of Control in India to, uh, to set up the IPL. And the board here obviously wants to maintain control. They've announced at this press conference that there will only be minority private investments. How, mm. how will that operate and, and what impact will that have? Yeah. Well, there'll be eight teams. Six of them will be city-based adjuncts to the relevant state association, which may or may not have minority private sector investors involved. However, the two other franchises, which have not been located, will be sold 100%, holus bolus, to, uh, to whoever wants to bid for them. Uh, in the case of the Indian Premier League, there were eight franchises sold to to uh, individual corporations and, uh, and some partnerships. Uh, there are now 10 of those, but, uh, but subsequently two of those have been, have been struck off and a third is looking in some trouble. This is the difficulty that you have with, uh, with private sector investment. Uh, I know that, that Cricket Australia is talking about all sorts of probity tests and, uh, and means of ascertaining that the right people get involved in the game, but the minute that you allow outsiders into the game, you lose control to some degree over what you've previously come to expect. Gideon, Cricket in Australia and Cricket Australia is run as a non-profit organisation. How are they going to do this without having to suddenly start paying mm. tax? That's right. Well, they're, they're going to have to set up some sort of freestanding corporate structure that is taxable because they will not be able to justify the, uh, the, the non-profit, untaxable basis under which they've previously operated. Uh, and that, there, is a, there is a serious question to hear about whether the game exists in order to make money or whether it makes money in order to exist. Uh, I would argue the former, but, um, but, but I guess that... Um, oh, I, would, I would argue the latter, but, but I guess Cricket Australia looks upon it as, um, as uh, the development being in the, uh, in the other respect. 
They also revealed at that press conference that these games are going to be played in December and January. Now, mm. that traditionally is, is when we play test matches, when we play Sheffield Shield games and have one-day internationals. Mm. Yeah, there was an interesting sort of mission creep about, uh, about James's statement. He sort of said, oh, it's going to be in December, January, maybe going into February. And you began to say, well, that's sort of the entire cricket season, James. What becomes of international engagements? He was wont to assure uh, his interlocutors that, uh, that, that the Boxing Day Test match, for instance, was safe. But what becomes of the Ford Ranger Cup? What becomes of the Sheffield Shield? What becomes of our one-day internationals? Uh, it, would be very, it looks as though we're going to have a very 2020-centric season in future. And he also talked uh, already about the possibility of the league expanding, a league that is more than a year away from happening. They're already talking about it being bigger. So, uh, so they've got big plans, um, and the, the, the sky's the limit. And if every, the country take, that... if every country takes this up and has their own IPL-style 2020 tournament, where will Test Cricket f uh, feature in the schedule? Well, that's right. And it was interesting that James sort of let slip that he, he described the, uh, the, uh, this, this, this Big Bash League, awful name, God, they got, rid of, got to get rid of the name, uh, he described that as an international competition, which raises the question, why is it under Cricket Australia's jurisdiction? Why is it not run by the ICC? Uh, that's not simply a, um, a, a semantic consideration. If it's going to require the input of international players, particularly Indian players, which is what really is going to, to, make, it, um, to make it popular and is going to attract the, the big television dollar, uh, why isn't the ICC you know, uh, empowered to, to run tournaments like this? Uh, I also haven't heard it justified as to, to why Australian cricket needs this money. Uh, is there anything in Australian cricket that Australian cricket would like that it doesn't have, that it can't already afford? Or is this simply just the, uh, the, the, the profit motive superseding all? Look, <clears throat> Gideon, I, I respect most of your reservations, but I'm ridiculously excited about that, this, Steve. Um, I think, first of all, the thing to say is this would appear to be <clears throat> James Sutherland in many ways, ushering out one-day cricket, 50-over internationals. Cricket Australia has tinkered with the domestic competition with the 50-over format, turned it into 45-overs, broken in half. So there are effectively two 2020s in one day. And they're not working because it doesn't have that magic dust that the words 2020 seem to sprinkle and people flock to 2020 cricket. I think the more 2020 we have, I think the scheduling is a huge problem, but the more we have at one end of the season, in the old one-day season where we used to have the triangular series, the more 2020s we have in January and February especially, then that leaves November and December for test cricket, which I believe should never die and will never die because I think people do appreciate it. But it leaves that second half of summer for 2020. If I could just say one more thing about 2020. It's a great night out, Steve. The, the, the problem with one-day cricket as it is now, and, and to some extent with the Big Bash, I don't think there is enough 2020 cricket. There's still only two or three matches in your home city. So if you've got kids, as I do and you do, and you want to take them like you do to the footy when there are 20 matches over the winter or 26 matches and you can go any week you choose to the footy, why can't the cricket be like that as well? We have to, in some ways, I reckon, get rid of the old narrative that every game must matter. Let's get this money in. Let's make it big. Let's get the world's best players. Let's make it exciting in January and February. You and I and our kids can go and have a hot dog and a pack of chips and a Coke at the, at, at the cricket, just like the footy. I'm excited, Steve. OK, if you, if you suddenly have games that don't matter, and doesn't that then increase the chances of corruption in the game, uh, which is something that we've seen... You know, enter the sport in particular in the last 10 years? Well, I think you're taking about, about 17 steps down the line. I really do. I think let's just look at the product first. We're talking about cricket. Isn't that the problem, that it's become a product? <laughs> Isn't that the it's problem? Something that doesn't it's not even a sport anymore. But it doesn't even resemble cricket anymore. I don't, I don't have a problem with 2020 in itself, but I don't think it, it is cricket. Uh, so I think what Cricket Australia should be doing is really pushing the test side of things and and promoting that because test cricket is something unique, cannot be replicated in any other sport across the world and have this fun hidden giggle which is the 20, 2020 make a bit of cash but don't try and make it a staple of the sport because then I think we could fall down in that area. Andrew, what are your thoughts on it? 
Well, actually, I was going to ask Gideon a question. It seems to me that, um, at the very least, what this is going to do is give Cricket Australia, or Australian cricket, rather, another platform to develop players, um, and it's also going to give them content, which is in, down the track going to lead to a bigger TV deal, which is going to, in turn, give the money to invest back in the grassroots and grow the game. I would have thought on that basis it, it's worthwhile, but, Gideon, I'm interested in your thoughts. Well, I'm not sure the kind of, the kind of cricketer it's actually going to develop. I don't think it develops a particularly rounded or a particularly skillful or a particularly interesting cricketer. I think 2020 breeds a, a pretty one-dimensional kind of player. 2020 gives us Dave Warner. Test cricket gives us Shane Warne. I, I think there are huge qualitative differences in the, in the but, kinds but, of cricketers that these two forms of the game beget. But Gideon... And if, and if, and if, and if, and if 2020 is to become the most lucrative, the most prestigious, the most attractive, the most promoted form of the game, then I think that we're... Cricket is lobotomising itself. Oh, Gideon, I was at the IPL earlier this year and I had a chat with a bloke you'd know, Dilip Primachandran, a very, very good mm. and respected young Indian journalist. He said to me that exactly what you're say saying, that, that, cricket, that 2020 is cannibalising cricket stocks, that, that within a couple of years India may not be able to put a proper test strength team on the field. Look what just happened in the tests, in the fabulous tests, by the way, in India, that Australia just played... Two graduates from the IPL in Rainer and Vijay came through for India and showed they they're were not, test... Mate, they they're played, not graduates of IPL. They played an enormous... They are, they are players that were created by the Indian domestic system who happened to have been recruited by IPL franchises. You can't say that 2020 has created either of those players. Well, they, it has given them the experience in the big-time environment. It's given them some money. That's what it's given them. <laughs> well... I'd never heard of them. I mean, so, so, you know, I don't live and breathe cr cricket 24-7 as you do because I write for a magazine across 50 different sports. But I'd never heard of these guys and yet they, they broke into international cricket through the IPL and showed they were of test quality. So, you know, I don't buy the, 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 the there's two different types of cricketers like, like cats and dogs out there. Well, it was interesting that uh, I thought that, uh, that, that the press conference today took place in the shadow of, uh, of Dennis Lilly's statue at the MCG. <laughs> 2020 would not give us Dennis Lilly. 2020 would allow Dennis Lilly to bowl 24 deliveries in a game. That is not going to create great cricketers. It felt it, uh, the backdrop was the MCG. Yesterday there was a fantastic game of cricket at the MCG, a Sheffield Shield game in which Victoria seemed to be cruising to victory at 5 for 230. They lost 5 for 30 at the end of four days of absolutely brilliant, fluctuating, pulsating cricket. Fortunately,